Right here, I've got a 2016 Audi S5, and it is the V6 supercharged. So beautiful. It's all black. It's got the uh, chrome silver side mirrors there. But this car is so beautiful, man. It looks so elegant. It's all black. Look at the chrome emblems on the side. Sleek designs. 20-inch wheels. I think those, those are 18. I'm sorry. 18-inch wheels. And I love the back design with the quad exhaust tips. Got the S5 emblem right there. Audi rings. And this is a really nice car. And one thing I wasn't expecting from this car that I found out driving it in the uh, first driving impression is that the exhaust, it kind of reminds me of the, the new Dodge, like the Challengers, the Scat Packs, and um, the regular RTs because uh, when it shifts gears at full throttle, it kind of makes that, uh, like that, <laughs> like that popping noise. I call it a fart, but it makes like a popping noise in between each, uh, Sure, but man, this is a, such a it's such a beautiful car. I love the design of the headlights. Audi has always had some of the best looking headlights, in my opinion. And the front grille, the front grille is just beautiful. It's immaculate. You see how big it is? You got the S5 emblem there. I love the way this thing looks in the front. It's so mean. Look at the headlights poking out. Yeah, man, really nice. All black, beautiful black paint. Like I said, 18 inch wheels by Audi, big centerpiece right in the middle. Nice wheels, got the uh, black brake calipers painted with the S5 on them right there. Let me see if you can see it right there. S5 brake calipers. And this car comes equipped with 245s all the way around. But good balance. And it's all wheel drive as you know, Quattro. So the same size, the same size tires is definitely a good thing to have with all wheel drive. But just look at it from the back. I mean, look at those exhausts. Look at those exhaust pipes. I love the design of it. Beautiful car. It's a beautiful, beautiful car. Now, this is the S5, not the RS5. I believe the RS5 is equipped with the V8. So, this is equipped with the uh, 3.0 liter V6 engine, but it's, it has a supercharger on top of that motor, which cranks out about 333 horsepower. Now, all that power is going through a seven speed dual clutch transmission. I believe they call it the Tiptronic transmission for the Audis. And when I say this thing is lightning quick, it shifts so fast and the paddle shifters, it will remind you of a GTR, how fast this car can change gears. Now, if you look up the top of the car, you'll notice that that's a huge sunroof, right? But it's not a traditional sunroof. It's not gonna fold all the way back into the car like it would in another car. All it does is pretty much tilt back for that added, uh, that added cool looking feature when you're driving. So, um, like I said, beautiful exterior, beautiful exterior. You see these beautiful lines coming from, coming from all the way up here. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. I'll tell you what, let's take a look under the hood and see exactly what that 3.0 liter supercharged engine looks like. Latches right here. Go ahead and open them up. And there you go. There's the V6. Supercharger on top. Pretty clean engine bay. Like the red colors they have in there. And it's running pretty smooth, man. It's a quiet engine, so you would never expect it to be as fast and menacing as it is. And we got a little piece of trash in there. I gotta go ahead and get that out of there. I can grab it without burning myself. There we go. Yeah, that's a supercharger right on top. Um, I've heard these things are pretty nasty when you get a stage two on it. I saw this guy had a stage two tune and um, put a bigger supercharger on it. I think he was pushing about 500 horsepower. And with this all-wheel drive and this transmission, that's plenty power to uh, beat pretty much anybody on the road. Now, like I said, pretty clean engine bay. Nothing too crazy, nothing too fancy. Uh, the battery is actually through there and it's not a traditional battery. It's just like a small post. So you can jump start it maybe and I'm pretty sure the battery is under it, something like that. Who knows? I'm not a German specialist. It comes to these German automobiles, but it's a really, really nice car. And I really, really love this car. So let's go ahead and close that bad boy. And like I said, this is a 2016. So this is not the uh, V6 turbocharged. This is not the uh, twin turbocharged V6. This is the supercharged V6. 
and it, I know it does say T, but it doesn't stand for turbo. Maybe it stands for Tiptronic transmission, I don't know. But I do know that this is the supercharged version, not the turbocharged version. So you have a little more of that low end torque, but it does pull very hard all the way to red line. Let's get inside of it. By the way, this thing has keyless entry. So all you have to do is have the key in your possession. Nice key, by the way. Nice little Audi key fob. Back, back to the uh, subject. But as long as you have the key in your possession, you can have it in your pocket. I keep it in my pocket. You can just walk straight up. The door will unlock itself as soon as you touch the door handle and you can walk right in. So before I get, before I get in, let's take a look at the door. And I know it's beeping like crazy, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut that off. All right. Let's go ahead and look at the door here. Nice leather here, really nice leather. Uh, it's got this nice material. I think that's Alcantara right there. Nice material all the way through. Got the door handle. I just love how the, the styling of the door, it just goes like straight down, straight to the door handle. And then it's just, it's just so smooth the way it is, a little pocket down here. Now you see you got the door sills. Or door jams, whatever you want to call them, they have the nice S5 emblem on there. And the uh, owner of this car has the uh, WeatherTech floor mats, which is a must if you have these cars. Um, you see the seats, nice, nice sport seats. This is the S5 sport seats. And as you can see, they have huge side bolster in here to support you because this car can hit some corners pretty fast. Um, check out the back seat, just pull this little lever here to get to the back. Um, back seat isn't too small, but it's not too spacious either. You see my jacket back there. This car comes equipped with these nice speakers. I believe they are called, it's not Bose. I know Audi has gotten out of the Bose. So this is Bang and Olufsen. Yeah, Bang and Olufsen, whatever you call it. Olufsen, Olufsen, however you pronounce it. But um, that's the speakers that are in this car. And these speakers are actually great. I mean, they're fantastic speakers. It sounds like you're in a concert whenever you turn the volume up in this car because the stereo system is just so good, so advanced. But um, that's the back seat. Uh, front seat, like I said, nice support, nice leather. Uh, you got the controls here, and you can actually extend this out if you wanted to, make it a little bit longer. Let's get inside so you can see what's going on. So that's the gauge cluster. I mean, really nice. Um, you got the whole infotainment system. You got everything down here. The navigation button. When you push the uh, navigation button, it takes you straight to the navigation screen. You can. Uh, Take this knob and move around, whatever you want to do, or put in the address to go wherever you want to go. When you hit telephone, obviously it brings you to your telephone screen. You got your directory and contacts. But my phone isn't set up to have the contacts and all that type of stuff, so it's not there. Um, you hit media, and you get to my phone where I was playing music. But here's the best part about this. And like I said, of course, you got the menu button and the back button. But here's the best part about this. You hit the car button, and it takes you to the Audi Drive Select screen. So for those of you that don't that for those of you that don't know what this is, um, you can use this knob here to select what driving mode you want to be in when you're driving. So right now we're in auto. If you go to dynamic right there, you got individual and you have comfort. Now of course, me being a car guy, my favorite is going to be dynamic. When you're driving dynamic mode, it livens up the exhaust system, it uh, livens up the transmission. So I like to drive around in dynamic mode when I want to play with the paddle shifters and all that. Speaking of paddle shifters, this car it does come equipped with paddle shifters on the steering wheel. This is not the traditional paddle shifters that are you know, attached to the actual steering column. They're attached to the steering wheel themselves. So when you turn the steering wheel, the paddle shifters go along with it. So you have to make sure you hold the steering wheel properly right here so that you can always have control of the paddle shifters if you're on a track, that is. Um, you got the cup holders here, a sliding armrest here. Not too much space, no, a little something, something. Um, what else yeah you got the ac controls down here you also have another drive select button right here so if you push that it'll just automatically change your drive selected right here in the um in the thing right here but i'm gonna leave it on auto for now you have the traction control button and this is how you activate launch control i believe you uh you can either push this to get the traction control off by itself or what you can do is you push and hold it for about three seconds and it'll cut off i believe it cuts it off and it gives you the option to be in launch control and i'll show you guys that when we do the driving part of this review but um like i said it's got really nice seats you see the s5 embroidered in the seat um quattro a little quattro emblem right there nice size glove compartment nothing too fancy and i'm still surprised that this is a cd player you don't see too many cd players in brand new cars so i'm a little surprised about that um if you're wondering what this is since we have a stop start engine button here that slot is for the key if you don't want to hold the key in your pocket, or if you just want to hold it somewhere so it can't go anywhere, just stick it in here. 
and that'll also start the car up if you didn't know. If the car was off and I put it in there and pushed it, it would start the car up. So I'm gonna take it out, put it back in my pocket, and we're moving on. So we get up to the sunroof here, not the traditional sunroof, number one. You pull it forward from the back, and like I said, here's the switch for it right here. The only function it has is to tilt up like that. That's the only function it has. But it makes it look really nice when you're looking at it from the outside. So I'll show you just what that looks like. So imagine you're coming down the road and you put it up. It's going to be tilted up just like that. Nice little sporty look to it, right? But that's all it does. It doesn't slide all the way back. It's too big. So that's what it does. So we're getting back in the car now. I'm almost done showing you guys everything on the inside so we can start driving. You see, I got my, my GoPro, the suction cup there, man. Go ahead and close that. Put that back, it's so hot. And um, it also have speakers here in the doors. Speakers down there, you got the trunk button here. Uh, the window, adjust the windows right there. You got presets for the seat position. And we also have a parking brake button. I'm not a big fan of these because I usually, I like the uh, traditional e-brake that you pull, but these are they're more technologically advanced, I guess. But the thing I don't like is that when the car is in drive, if you open up the door to do anything, like, you know, talk to somebody who's next to you or do anything, then it will automatically put the parking brake on and you won't know. So when you close the door and try to drive off, you won't go anywhere. It happened to me twice already. So just demonstrate how that happens. I'll put the car in drive. Open up the door, and now watch this. See, it automatically just put the parking brake on. And now that I close the door, I have to push the button, and it takes it off. And I felt it disengage on the brake. So that's the parking brake. Um, so that is pretty much everything for the inside, as far as looks and functionality. So um, I guess we can start. It's nothing too crazy. So, and this car has 27,000 miles on it. But yeah, I think that's all it. I think that's all there is for the inside of this car. One thing I didn't mention is the steering wheel. This thing, I love it. It's a very racing type steering wheel. You got these notches right here on 10 and 2. And as you see, it's got the flat bottom down here, um, which is great. You won't knock your knees on here when you're making a sharp turn or when you're going around a long curve or anything like that. Really comfortable. You got the uh, options here to change the mode on the screen. You also have the volume control here, phone control, and navigation buttons. So it's pretty nice, man. You got the horn in the middle. But that is about all there is for the inside of this car. Let's go ahead and start driving it. One thing you have to know about this car is the exhaust sound. I'm gonna let the window down a little bit. Listen to this. You hear that? And by the way, this car stock, it won't let you rev out past 4,000 RPMs when you're in park. Pretty sure if you're in neutral, it's something different, but who knows? All right, so we're inside the car right now, the S5, 2016 S5. Um, you guys gotta hear this exhaust sound, it's ridiculous. Uh, I've got it in dynamic mode right now and I've got it in manual shifting mode, so I'm gonna use the paddle shifters. You can shift with the uh, stick down here too, but I'd rather, use the, I'd rather use the paddle shifters. So let me turn this AC down so y'all can hear me correctly. All right, everybody can hear me. And uh, we're gonna demonstrate launch control too so you guys can see how that works out. These are paddle shifters right here. So this is what it sounds like when you shift the gears and it has a really good exhaust note and it gives a nice pop when you shift the gears at over 3,000 RPM. So here we go. A second. Get this little bump. Here we go. I love these paddle shifters, man. It's just, you feel so in tune with the car. Watch this. This car is so much fun to drive. It's ridiculous. all-wheel drive is so buttery smooth when you make when you go around and turn this car the all-wheel drive the quattro system that this Audi uses it is ridiculous I mean you feel it grip every bit of the road watch the downshift let me roll that down so you can hear that just a little bit hear that exhaust Oh my god! <laughs> Did y'all hear that? Oh my god! 
gosh, that is crazy. Oh, I'm in love with that Audi now. Every time I test drive another car, I fall in love. I need to just buy every single car in the world. That'll solve my problem. But um, yeah, this all-wheel drive is so advanced. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous, honestly. Hear that low grunt? Roll that back up so you can hear. Hear that grunt? Right now we're in fifth gear. I'm in fifth gear cruising at about 2200 RPM. When you gas a little bit, that's the sound you get. It just sounds so damn good. And here's the best part about it. You can sound like this, you can downshift. Sound like that. Yay! Y'all hear that pop? Oh my gosh. drive this car fast because the all-wheel drive just keeps you in keeps you in check I mean you can go you can just move around it's crazy I feel like I'm a shark swimming amongst fish <laughs> that's exactly how I feel but I want to get somewhere where I can demonstrate the all-wheel I mean where I can demonstrate the launch control to you guys so what I'm gonna do is uh, I know where I can take you okay so launch control like I was saying the best way to put it in launch control is to go to the drive select button, push it until you see dynamic mode, just like that. Then once you see dynamic mode, you're in the right driving mode. So the next thing you do is traction control button, you push it and you hold it for about three seconds until it says that. Stability control off and traction control off. So then the next thing you do is put it in drive, but really it's S. You stomp your foot on the brake, you floor it, and it holds right there at about 3,000 RPM. And then you let off the brake. And the result is this. All right, here we go. Foot hard on the brake, foot hard on the gas. And here we go. Shit! That's 60 already. Oh, shit. Woo! Woo! <laughs> That's launch control for you, man. That's launch control for your ass. Oh shit. That is launch control for your ass, man. How do you only do this 200 times? I want to do it 350 more now. <laughs> I mean, seriously, that is the quickest takeoff I've ever felt in a car before. Oh my God, that was quick. It got to 60 like that. That had to be at least, I'm, I know that was under five seconds, but I want to know just how fast it really was. Because this car, um, the manufacturer, Audi says that it can do 0 to 60 in about 4.5 seconds. I think I can get it to be a little lower, like 4.4, 4.3, if you give me a good, you know, give me a good street, give me a good road, nice and smooth, nice and cool temperatures to keep that supercharger nice and cool. Because superchargers tend to get heat soaked in, you lose a lot of power. But I didn't feel not an inch of power loss in that port right there, honestly. In case anybody wanted to see it twice, it's really just an excuse for me to do it again, honestly. So, same story. You come to a complete stop. You turn track, track, hold the traction control button three times. Dynamic mode, hard brake, hard gas. Hold it, take off. I want to know if you can do launch control while using the manual paddle shifters. I don't think you can because I would imagine that they don't want somebody to forget the shift and then you redline and be you know, banging gears all day like that. But this is insane. I keep forgetting how fast this all wheel drive will shoot you off if you're not paying attention. See, in my car, front wheel drive or in the vet, rear wheel drive. When you're coming out of a, when you're at a standstill and you're about to make a turn, you can gas it and it's, it's gonna take off smoothly. This one takes off, it snatches off once it catches because that all-wheel drive system and the supercharger, I don't know what it does, but it's doing some good shit all together, I'll tell you that much. The brakes on this car, they're not carbon ceramics and they're not drilled and slotted. They're just regular brake discs. But the stopping 
the stopping power that this car has is second to none. And you would think it has crossing drill, slotted rotors. Oh man. See? Stops on the dime. Stops on the dime. And it downshifts by itself so you can really get that stopping power. this car picks up speed it's so deceptive because oh, that downshift it's so deceptive it's very deceptive because it'll take off smooth and silky and make you think that you're not gonna go any faster then all of a sudden it'll switch gears and you take off by itself and your foot didn't move at all in the gas pedal it's not like you gave more of an input on the throttle it's just this car wants to go and it wants to go so bad that it will go without your permission this car is making me want to do some things do some things do some things the paddle shifters on this car they're just so good i mean it's it's a nice looks like a titanium or aluminum the material that they use to make these paddle shifters and they have the nicest they have the nicest click when you click when you press them it's not like a a flimsy paddle shifter where you feel like you're gonna break it i mean you click it and it just goes i mean it changes gears instantly this dual clutch transmission is the best thing in the world as far as i'm concerned you can throw those old torque converters away if you ask me this car is ridiculously fun to drive um the transmission i just can't get over the transmission in this thing it's just it's like the best transmission i've ever driven ever but you see i drove the um when i drove the scat pack and the hellcat that had the zf eight speed transmission automatic that shifts pretty fast too but the thing is it shifts fast in regular automatic mode. When you put it in the paddle shifter mode, it's not as fast, but it's quick. This, this is quicker in paddle shifting mode. It's quicker than the Dodge, than the Dodge 8-speed in automatic mode. I know that for a fact. You click and you're in the next gear. You click down and you're in the previous gear. I mean, it's, it's effortless. The thing I will point out about this car that makes it feel that much sporty, like I said before, is the steering wheel. You got the notches here on 10 and 2, and you got the flat bottom. So you feel like you're in a race car, which you technically kind of are. It's a sports car, and it's designed to go around the Autobahn because it's a German car. But don't get me started. So this is technically a race car, and it feels just like a race car. And it sounds like one, too. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to hop on the interstate real fast, just so we can uh, get a quick pull. See the type of acceleration this thing can do. Even though I know the type of acceleration this car do, because you know once I got it, once I picked this car up, I've been... I've been getting it ever since. Look at these retards. Don't even know how to drive. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, ma'am. Oh my God. It's so easy to change directions in this car because of the all-wheel drive quattro system. I mean, when you when you turn, you can literally feel the car grip with all wheels. And I mean, I'm not trying to exaggerate here. I'm not just saying that just because I know it. You, I can literally feel the car just gripping everything and so you have to realize i'm coming from a front wheel drive car and rear wheel drive cars that's the only two cars i've really driven and owned mostly rear wheel drive but front wheel drive so you know when you go around a curve or you're, you're doing anything you're driving sporty or driving spiritedly you can feel that yeah you've got grip but you can feel that at any given moment if you go too hard you'll lose that traction but this car when i'm going around a curve it feels like i'm planted i mean literally feels like i am planted like i have a root system into the ground and it is ridiculous. It makes you a little bit too confident because now I want to go around the corner at 100. But I'm not going to do that because obviously, you know, for, for safety reasons and, and, and uh, you know, speeding ticket reasons and going to jail. I'm not trying to do any of that today. But we are going to push a little bit to see what we can get out of it. All right, now we're on the interstate now. Oh, you know what that means when we get on the interstate. drive system it's just too much man you go around a curve you don't even feel like you're going around a curve and you can just let go of the steering wheel and just it just drives so straight and true this car is so well balanced and it is just ridiculous i want one you feel me for real i need this but uh back to what i was doing which is floor Oh man, 
don't even need to ask you if you heard that because I know you heard it. Oh my God, I just wish you could have felt that, man. That is crazy. This acceleration is ridiculous. And I can't tell you how fast I was going, obviously, because I don't want to get in trouble, but let's just say it was north of what I should be going. I can't get over how good this car is to drive, man. It's like eating a good piece of cake for the first time. It's so sweet, you just want to keep eating until you just get sick. Until you get sick of it, you can't eat anymore. That's how I feel, I want to keep driving this car until I get sick of it and I don't want to drive it anymore. But I honestly don't think that will ever happen because I love driving this car. So I gotta keep it 100 with y'all. I completely forgot to do the outro for the S5 review I just did. So this is it. Um, if you like the video, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications, all that type of stuff. Um, and please excuse me for being so rough. Yeah, man, let me get me a haircut real soon this week. So excuse the roughness, you know. But um, yeah, man, if y'all like that video, please subscribe, all that good stuff, bell notifications, hit the thumbs up, show me that you appreciate it. And also you get to see this beautiful fat right here, you know, got that beautiful thing back there got the parts right here still waiting to get these put on and wait for my mechanic and if it takes too long i might have to try to put them on myself you know so like i said this is the end of the video if you liked it subscribe all that good stuff i'm out see you on the next one